I'm doing what it does every day, you know, breathing in and breathing out. So I, I you know, at the end of all that, I became uh, immensely fond, more fond of the planet, you know, which I never thought about when I actually just live on the surface. And also kind of fond of the people on there too. It's like being taken away from your family and coming back. And, um, you know, I wish it all well. Uh, uh, just before Christmas, I got told I got um, pancreatic cancer, you know, stage four, so it's elsewhere in me, not just in, in one place. So, uh, you know, the, the odds are I won't be around for very long. Uh, you know, it's very small chance of survival. So, uh, that's really motivated me, you know, to think about what's important to do. Mm -hmm. and what can I contribute in the time I have left? So this is a model simulation of the Earth now. We have about 20 satellites that are dedicated to looking at the Earth every day. One looks at clouds, one looks at the sea surface temperature. OCO looks at carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. All this information comes in. And this is the tool we use to do climate simulation. Here's an example of one thing we can see. This is ocean surface temperature as measured from space. This is the whole world's surface temperature. You can see the poles melting there. Wow. Yeah. This That's is the way amazing. to do it, man. I mean, this is the way to really see what's going on. Here's a Gulf Stream. Look at this. This is the motion of the ocean. This is like a great piece of art. It is, isn't it? Biggest impact would be here. In the Gulf Stream. Yeah. Now this current here, is it? Mm -hmm. The dumping of ice off melting Greenland would stop this conveyor belt and that the Gulf Stream would slow down and stop in the transport of heat from here to there. And then Europe would get cold toes because there's a lot of heat transport from the tropics across the North Atlantic that keeps Europe warm. I mean, so you, Europe you, you, you would look, get colder? Yeah. Because right? that's the big misconception about climate change is that everything gets warmer. Yeah. Wow. And here's the most advanced precipitation satellite in the world. It's very important because we think the biggest impact from climate change is the moving of the precipitation belts from the equator that go further out. So we're already seeing so that causes consistent drought. More drought in places that are already too hot. Yes. And there's a lot of papers written in the State Department elsewhere how that sustained drought has helped fuel the conflict, the Syrian civil war, Darfur, Sudan, all these places that are short of water, short of food. Is this throughout the entire planet, or is it just this particular region right nope. here? No, expected the whole world. We expect bits of India. We expect in the U.S., Oklahoma, you know, the uh, Dust Bowl region. We expect right. that to get much, much drier over the next few decades. Oh, my God. Right. And what about my home state of California here? Uh, not looking great, I'm afraid. Now, our models predicted persistent drought in the Dust Bowl and here for 50 years from now. But we're just seeing the worst drought in 900 years here right now. So it's coming a bit earlier than we thought. We're talking about this happening over a pe period of a few decades. It's just consistent, not great news. No. But a lot of people now are kind of confused about the issue. You know, the facts are crystal clear. The ice is melting. The earth is warming. The sea level is rising. Those are facts. Rather than feeling, oh my god, it's hopeless, say, OK, this is the problem. Let's be realistic. Let's find a way out of it. And there are ways out of it. You know, if we stopped burning fossil fuel right now, the planet would still keep warming for a little while before cooling off again. So you're saying that if we do the right thing, right. Eventually we, the we're going to heat up, or we're going to It'll turn even off, out. and then it'll, then it'll start cooling again. Would that Arctic ice sheet start to then increase again? It, once the cooling started, yeah. So there really is a possibility to repair this trajectory Absolutely. that we're on. Interesting. Yeah. So there's hope. You seem to have an incredibly positive attitude just about everything, though. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, I do. I actually, I'm a basically optimistic kind of person. I have, I have faith in people. I, have, I really do have faith in people. And I think that once people come out of a fog of confusion on an issue or uncertainty about an issue and realistically appreciate it at some level, the threat, and they're informed of what the best action is to, to deal with it, they got on and did it. And what seemed like almost impossible to deal with, you know, became possible.